Right, g'day and welcome to the first ever uh, live stream for my YouTube channel. Hopefully uh, you can all hear me okay. If you're there, let me know and uh, put a little note in the comments box. Let me know that you're there and you can hear everything okay. Looks like everything's working fine, which is good uh, being my very first go at this. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at some images. Uh, some people have kindly sent me in their images. I've got a heap of images, so... Uh, I'm not going to get through them all. So what I'll do is I'll do several of these and if I don't get to your image today, I apologize, but I will do my best to get to your image uh, somewhere in the future. My little microphone stand is not cooperating too much. Let's see if we can fix that up. Images today, then, um, you know, in the future, we'll look at getting to your images. I'm just going to see if I can do something to stop this from coming up so often. Pretty sure I can. There we go. Should help weigh it down a bit. All right. So how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, today's going to be a bit of fun. We're going to have a look at some images and see um, a few people's images. Before we get stuck into that, I wanted to remind you that I am also on Facebook and on Instagram. So if you enjoy following me on the YouTube channel, it might be a good idea to also head across to the Facebook page or the Instagram page uh, where you can keep up with my entire feed. And, uh, you know, I'm always posting images there. Pretty much every day I post something up. And uh, also, if something's coming up or I'm doing something, I typically will post it there as well. So make sure you head over there. So that's the uh, Facebook page. Both of them are the same on three legs. Um, Pretty easy to find me there if you want to uh, if you want to catch up. Good way to do it. And uh, these live sessions, I'm going to try and do these once a week if I can. And uh, and if you want your image critiqued, then shoot it through to Ben at on 3 uh, which is just my name, Ben at on 3 legs, and that is the word number three. So on 3 legs, as in the tripod dot com. And uh, you may end up getting your image critiqued as well. And if you're in the if you're in the live feed, if you're watching this live, feel free to chat, put something in the chat box, ask a question, whatever you like, and I will do my best to answer them as I go through. Let's get stuck straight into the critiques. I've got three photos today from three photographers, and you know it's a very brave thing to put your photos out there for people to take a look at and give their opinion on and critique. So thank you to these three photographers, um, three guys today. Um, I haven't had many women send their photos in. I've had a couple, so, you know, girls, send your photos in. Let's all jump in this together. Um, so I've got Craig Everson. Thanks, Craig, so much. I've actually met Craig. Craig's a great guy uh, from New South Wales, so um, I'm going to critique one of your images, mate. I've got one of your images here, and I'm going to give you a bit of feedback on what you can do better. I've got Rob Roy, who actually started the session. So if you're wondering who's responsible for starting the, the live critique sessions that I'm doing now, what I'm calling Pixel Chatter, um, is Rob Roy. Rob is a, um, a photographer who contacted me and said, hey, Ben, would you mind looking at a few of my photos? And I said, sure, send them across. And then I thought, you know what, why not do this as, a, as something that we can use um, to connect and work together on uh, improving our photography. So thanks, Rob. I'm going to do one of your images. And uh, Brian Willert, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Brian's also sent in some images, so we'll be looking at his. Um, let's get stuck straight into it. I've preloaded these photos into my into Photoshop. And um, straight away, this is, this is Craig's image. We'll spend a couple of uh, minutes on each image, and I'll show you a couple of tricks of what I do to quickly evaluate what's going on with an image. Straight away, when I look at this, there's a few things that... Um, you know, that bother me with this image. Um, I can see where you're going with it, Craig. I can see why um, you would have taken this. Moving water is beautiful, and you can see that he's taken a long exposure here, um, which gives you that misty effect of the water. Now, if you're not in a dark enough situation, then it's quite easy for you to be able to, um, you know, make this happen. Now, I'm using my Photoshop. Let me see how I go. If I can get this working, here we go. So there's a few things straight away that bother me, and I'm just going to do this in layers, so I'm not writing all over the picture and making it so I can't make it disappear. Select my brush and just... Oh, we won't zoom in. We'll, we'll need to change the brush size. There we go. Um, so you'll see there's some areas of extreme highlights, right? And I can see that without even having to... Um, 
without having to do anything, I can see there's some a lot of highlighting going on in this photo. So it's overexposed. And this is a real problem with uh, with water. It's very easy for these overexposed spots to happen. Um, and, you know, it's something that you have to be really careful with when you're doing a long exposure with water because you will find that you'll get these highlights, they blow out, and you'll end up, uh, it, you know, it does, it ruins an image. To me, you know, they're big areas of highlights and it's really hard to control though. So, um, you know, good on you, Craig, for having a go because it is a tough thing to do, especially in a, a situation where you've got such a high dy dynamic range. Now, if you have a look, the other things that bother me is this corner up here is really dark with this little hot spot in the middle. This corner over here, really dark. Same down here and same down here. And so what happens is, Overall, if I just get rid of those marks, overall this image is just really this. <laughs> the rest is is not really, um, you know, it's not working for me. Um, the the reality is this over here, this shrub here in the right hand side. I know this is getting a bit messy. Um, is very bright, so the sun was obviously hitting that. Um, or it, you know, I'm not sure if this is an attempt at some sort of HDR either, but it could be. Now, I'm just going to show you a quick trick. If you do have Photoshop, right, um, one of the things to do to, to, to find these highlights, uh, a trick that you can do, and the and also the shadows. So let me uh, let me just select. We'll go, we'll use blue for shadows. We'll just go blue. Oh, that didn't work. Let me fill that in. I want blue, please. There we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just creating a layer. Let's get a bucket. Yep, we've got a bucket. So I'm just creating a blue layer, which looks kind of weird. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go into blending options. And we are going to give me the blend mode um, as if, I blend as if, there we go. And we are going to just bring that back. So we just get all the dark areas and I'll bring it right back. Okay. So what that's done is it's just highlighted where all the really dark pixels are. Now, if you have a look at the histogram on the right-hand side, if I just go down to the original image um, and I just select the selected layer. So if you look on the right-hand side over here um, of the Photoshop screen, you can see the histogram shows us that all the pixels are bunched up to the left, but there's also a very thin line up the right-hand side of the histogram. So straight away, that is showing us that there's extreme shadows and there's some blown out highlights so just by looking at the histogram we can see that but by me adding this layer um, and i've blended it the way i've had you can actually see where complete shadows are so a, a big percentage of this image is underexposed okay so that's a bit of a challenge let's do the same thing we'll add another layer but this time we're going to do it for uh, highlights so i need a different color so let's switch the palette over and let's go for red there it is and we'll fill that in with red again. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to change our blending slightly. And we're going to blend the other way, the underlying layer. Let's go to 250, somewhere around there. Okay. So straight away now, um, this the good thing about this is that... Uh, I think I've drawn all over this one. Yeah, I'll do a new layer. The good thing about this is straight away... If I just go back to my brush, straight away you can see these highlighted i'll go back to yellow let's get another color going let me just change this over to yellow now yeah, that'll do so straight away you can see that these areas there's several of them this one big one down here and these over here are blown out so this is an image that um you know i'd get home i'd put on the cam on the computer and i would never ever worry about finishing it off why because it is you know, unfortunately, it's very hard to recover um, blown highlights. Um, in water, you can get away with a little bit. Like, I probably wouldn't bother me um, for the smaller ones. But this big one down here, which is sort of right in the middle of the image, I would be a bit worried about. Um, the other thing to consider, too, when you're taking a photo. Um, so that sort of covers highlights and shadows. So this is, and this is a huge dynamic range image. Very, very hard to capture without HDR or like a medium format camera that can capture 13 stops of light. Um, he's done a great job to capture it with the amount of dynamic light there is there. Um, so Craig's done a great job, but um, it simply just doesn't work. Too many shadows, too many highlights, and that's sort of my feeling on that. The other thing that I think is a good idea to do, if you use your crop tool inside of um, 
Photoshop, you can print, you can bring up things like the rule of thirds. You just click on here, and you can start to sort of have a look at where the image is sitting. So from a rule of thirds point of view, he certainly has got the rock here and the water flowing on the right spot. But there's nothing really over here that's interesting. And once again, I would, I would probably, you know, I'd even be tempted, you know, just to crop it in tight to get rid of all the rubbish if it wasn't overblown. And sometimes, you know, you could take an image and just crop it like so. And, uh, you know, it can take on a whole different sort of world by doing that. So, you know, sometimes think about your cropping and, you know, always think about the highlights. Because if I bring those highlights back up now, you can see a big portion of the image is, is blown out. Um, but certainly I would think about that cropping. So that photo, good good try, but when you're doing water, be really careful of those blown highlights, really careful of high dynamic range, and uh, and Craig, just watch your, um, uh, your, your cropping as well. Make sure that you're, you're thinking about that rule of thirds and you're getting things on the right place. So that's sort of, um, that's the first image. And I can see uh, Brian's on in the in the chat room. G'day, Brian. I'm going to do one of yours uh, very shortly, <laughs> which should excite you. Um, and by the way, I don't want anyone to take this to heart. You know, this is just a, uh, it's my opinion. Uh, you know, I know that you, um, you know, you, you follow me and you like my photography, but it doesn't mean I know everything about photography. Um, I'm just giving you some of the thoughts that I have by looking at your image and thinking, well, what, what could you do to have done better? Uh, to make your image work better. All right, let's jump straight into the next one um, because I think it's important that we jump in. And um, funnily enough, it's also water. This one's from Rob Roy. And, uh, you know, this image is actually okay. There's there's a few things in this image that bother me. Now, he's cropped it as a panoramic, which um, could or could not have been a, a good idea. I don't know. So I can't tell you what the rest of the image is. I have a feeling that... Um, let me just start a new layer so I can draw on this image. I have a feeling that somewhere up here, there could have been a really nice waterfall. Um, I'm not sure. Um, and my eye wants to look up there. I also find this great big rock in the foreground um, is a distraction the way it's been framed. And once again, if we put the rule of thirds grid over the top of that, let's just quickly do that. Yeah, I've got that. Once again, you can see that the rock is on a point of interest, and it should be, but I would suggest that it would have been better if the camera was back a little bit and to the right, and that would have moved that rock left slightly and up slightly, and it could have occupied a bit more of the image if it was a, you know, it's a beautiful rock covered in moss. I can see um, if we look down, um, let me just go back to brush, get out of that. If we look down the bottom here, um, some beautiful, oh, I'm still in the crop mode, I need a brush. What are you doing, Ben? Give me a brush. Give me a brush. Give me a brush. Let's turn that layer back on. There we go. So if you look down the bottom here, some beautiful ferns and stuff down there. Um, the other thing that really is distracting in the image that I'm not uh, happy with is probably this here, um, which is that coming across the water. So when you're composing a shot, always think about what's in your photo. And I would have actually entered the water from the edge here. And I would have picked that up and moved it out of the shot because it doesn't add any value. Um, so never be afraid to jump in the water. I'm just going to do another layer because it's getting a bit messy. Never be afraid to jump in the water and remove something like that. Now, if you even if I just quickly was to go in here and do a little bit of healing, uh, if we were to zoom right in, it's going to be hard on this because it's a, um, a low-res photo. But even if, you know, I would probably go in and get rid of some of these sort of spots um because you know they just don't add any value so by going in and using your your you know tools your healing brush and you've got one in lightroom or in photoshop you can sort of start to just get the photo to look better um now of course that's the hard way to do it let's face it, <laughs> it would have been much easier if we could have done that at the particular time that we took the photo rather than trying to do it uh when we're you know, back home on the computer, it's quite hard to do that, um, is just jump in the water, pull it out. It doesn't add any value. Um, and, uh, you know, once again, really think about your framing here. Now, if I once just get the crop tool once again and just bring it in slightly from the edge here, give you some sort of an idea of what I think would, would work better. There's absolutely no value in that wider shot. 
um, as soon as I bring it in just that bit, even the same shot cropped a bit differently, I feel it works better. Um, and, you know, we're making the rock a bigger thing. We could probably even go a little bit more. We could probably crop it a tad more. So let's let's bring it in just that bit more and see what happens. Um, and you'll see that straight away you're getting a much more interesting shot. Now if that tr that branch wasn't in the shot, in fact, you know what, I'm going to bring that left-hand side in just that little bit more. I um, hope you guys don't mind me doing this to your photos, but that's what you've asked me to do. Um, I want to crop that in just that little bit more. Just I'm going to really use that rock as a border and something like that. So you see straight away by tightening it up, if that... Um, if this wasn't in the middle, I think it would be, that would have worked really well. Um, and what I've done there, if we just put the rule of thirds back over the top, just so we can see what we've done. Oh, doesn't like that. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, you can see that that line is now near the top of the water. The rock is on that intersection, filling up that bottom quarter nicely. Um, and it just works really nice. There's a little waterfall. I don't know if you can see that little waterfall right there on that top line. It's a little waterfall coming across that rock, and that's really nice and interesting, and that's on that line. So, you know, when you start to compose, these are the sort of things that you can think about in your images. So um, thanks so much for sending that in, Rob. Really appreciate it. And I know that it's a pretty brave thing to do to have somebody working on your images live. So hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully I wasn't too harsh and... You picked up some tips there, uh, but that's certainly what I would have done is I would have just uh, probably changed my composition a bit. And the thing is, a lot of people sort of, um, it's funny, I get a lot of comments on uh, my YouTube videos of how I am single-minded, I just go for one shot. But I feel that uh, a one good shot deserves the investment of time. Now, of course, if you're, you've got the right light, you can stick around and you can get a two or three or maybe four great shots. But I see a lot of photographers, they get somewhere and they jump around and they take, you know, five or six different compositions very quickly and don't put a lot of thought into any of them. So they get five or six average compositions. What I like to do is I like to jump straight into uh, finding one composition and then spending a lot of time getting that right. I might zoom in, zoom out, move slightly to the right, to the left, just to, to enhance it. But I spend a lot of time making sure that that one uh, image is a good image and Brian's just saying be hard on me <laughs> all right Brian you asked for it um, so you know when you think when you get there don't be afraid to spend a bit of time thinking about what um, adds to the picture and what detracts from the image so for example in that one that I had up before of Rob's let me just quickly bring that back up it's easy to go okay well what actually adds to this image um, and this is my um this is my now new cropped version so let me just go back to the uncropped version if I could do that very quickly there we go so if we go back to his original image um, you know you can quickly go well what was it that was working well for him and uh, what wasn't well there was a couple of things big rock in the foreground is a great thing to do um, but there's really there's no the eye's not drawn to anything. There's no real leading line. It's quite a difficult image to um, focus on. And just moving around a bit and removing some of the distractions. So pulling that that twig out. I mean, I can see that's quite shallow there. You could have easily walked across, grabbed that branch and all that rubbish, and just pulled it out of the picture, and it would have made the world a difference. So never be afraid to spend that little bit of extra time to do that because you're always going to uh, get that benefit. Um, now, if you've just tuned in, I know that we've got a few new people tuning in. You are uh, watching Pixel Chatter, which is a live image critique session that I've just started today. Um, and a reminder too, of course, that I am on Facebook and on Instagram. So if you want to catch up with me on those platforms, I'd love for you to do that and uh, come across and join the conversation. I've got, uh, you know, I share images every day on both those platforms and, you know, you can chat back and, and chat with me. Um, if you are watching live, by the way, and you want to ask a question, feel free to type it into the chat box and uh, ask away. Um, once again, thanks to Craig Everson, Rob Roy, and Brian Willert. Hopefully I've pronounced that surname right, Brian, um, for sharing these images with us today because it's a very brave thing to do to have your images critiqued live in a video like this. All right. Brian, here we go. Um, so I've picked this one out of Brian's for a couple of reasons. Uh, I think the composition could be better, and I think the colors are... Um, there's something going on with the colors. I'm not sure how you processed it. Um, but it's as if you just put a red filter in front of the lens and 
I just don't think it works. I think I, I, I get what you're doing. So let's let's break this down into a few things. So composition wise, let's go there first because I think that's a, a big an easy thing for you to improve. Um, the sky was dramatic and interesting, but you've lost that. Um, because you've taken the contrast out of the image. And contrast is the difference between the whites and the blacks. And, and by applying this red color across the entire image, you've lost contrast. You've lost um, you've lost contrast. That's well, I can't say anything else. Um, so I would suggest that in this image now, for me to be able to... Let me just grab my layers so I can start to break this down. So in this image now, the first thing I would do is if we, if we come across to the crop tool and... Once again, all I'm doing is in the crop tool, you can select something up here. I'm selecting the rule of thirds, which is sort of, you know, it's the the go-to, um, you know, way of working out what your image is doing. Um, and the way the rule of thirds works is the where these lines intersect, you should have something of interest on them. And as you can see in this image, Brian, there's absolutely nothing of interest on any of those intersections. And so what's happening is that the image is just flat. Now you're saying there's no filters used, get that, but you've, you've obviously post-processed this because um, that's a, a very intense color. So there must be some saturation. But yeah, please make sure you comment, Brian, if you can tell me, give me some sort of feedback as to how you processed it. But I can see that there's been a fair bit of saturation saturation or vibrance or something put into this image uh, to bring the colors out like they are. Um, and it's just a bit distracting. There's a few elements of this image that I absolutely love though. Um, and, I'll, and I'm gonna highlight those now. So let me just get rid of that before I start mucking around. Um, I'll get my brush. This down here, the reflection of the clouds in the water, love it. I think it's great. Um, I think that, you know, you could have probably repositioned yourself to grab a bit more of that. And these are the things I think a lot of photographers don't think about. When you're there, it's easy not to see that because, um, you know, you're there, you're in the moment, you're excited. There's a lot of color. It's exciting. And especially if you're new at landscape photography, um, you, you know, these days are few and far between. Might be one in 10, one in 15, one in 20 shoots. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it seems longer than that, that you get this amazing color. So you get really excited. You get the camera out and you take a snap. And you can miss those type of opportunities. And that, that reflection in the water is a great opportunity not to worry about capturing it up here because it's down here. Um, and I'll show you why in a second with this composition, why that, that could have been something you could have done. Um, I think that works really, really well. I think the other thing that's that's awesome is the um, you know the the way that the things that are a bit ugly in this image have been hidden, and that's these little solar panels. Um, you know, they're, industrial things in pictures don't typically excite me, um, but you've got so many masts of these boats up that it just sort of blends them all in. So I think that works really well. Um, and I do like the fact that you've put a jetty in there. I don't like the way it's composed, and I'll come back to that in a second, uh, but I really do like the way that you've got a jetty in there as well. I'm a big one for foreground, and if, if, you, if you're not sure what that does, what that does is it makes the image more three-dimensional. It gives it depth because you now know roughly your brain can work out based on how the size of these nail heads shrink and the boardwalk shrinks, you've got an idea of how far away things are. Um, so it's really important if you can put foreground into your shot, then always recommend it. Now this could have probably done with a bit more foreground um, and we'll come, let's talk a bit more about composition now. Um, so they're the things I love, Brian, I think did well. I think the color's amazing, but it's just oversaturated. There's just too much color for me. Um, and I think it loses a bit of its natural aspects. And somewhere in the post-processing, you've got a bit of halo going on now. Halo is a bit of a tricky one. And let me, I'll just start a new layer. Um, down here, along the side of this jetty, there's like this haloing going on. And you've got to be really careful when you do a few things in Photoshop or Lightroom, because that happens quite easily. And it could be something like the clarity slider, the dehaze slider in in Lightroom will both give you that effect. Um, and sometimes over sharpening will give you that effect. And I can see this is a, this is a very sharp image. So I don't know how much sharpening you applied, or if you've got sharpening turned on inside your camera. But I'd be very careful of that. Um, and on that note, I would turn off everything in your camera that does stuff automatically. So if you've got something in your camera that does sharpening, noise reduction, uh, you know, uh, vibrance, any of those settings, turn them all off. Um, you want your image being as flat as possible when you bring it into your Lightroom or Photoshop to allow you then to start that creative process. Don't let your camera do what you can do later because it's going to steal that ability from you. Now, if you're shooting RAW, it's not a great big deal because RAW doesn't let you do that. Um, but I know some of you may be shooting JPEG um, 
Now, if you can, I'd say shoot raw as well. But shooting JPEG is another is going to limit the ability of you to be able to change things later in post production. Um, now, I'm working with JPEG low res images here, so it's a bit hard for me to demonstrate any of that. But it's really important that when you um, start thinking about um, getting serious about post processing, you want to make sure um, that you uh, um, you know that you that you have the best possible way of manipulating them later. Now Brian's just come through with a comment said no saturation used the colors were very intense. Okay, um, there's something going on with this image then to make it so red. Um, and if the colors were that intense that morning, that's amazing, <laughs> really amazing. Um, and you were very lucky to grab that color. But um, all right, let's talk about composition then. Let's get stuck into composition um, because I think that's a big key thing here. As I said before, if we put the oops, if we put the rule of thirds over this image, you can see where the lines intersect. There's nothing of interest. So straight away, I would do something like that. Now, what I've done is I've put the horizon on that top line. Okay, and as soon as I make that selection, you can see the image has just come to life. Okay, and the reason for that is if we put that grid back over the top. Now, let's put the rule of thirds grid on the top. The reason for that now is we're starting to put things on the intersections. So both these top intersections have got the horizon on them. This one, the bottom right intersection, still has nothing on it. And same with the bottom left. It nearly has this wharf on it. So let's just move that in a little bit even. Okay. Now, um, sorry, out a bit. If I was there, now there's no picture out here, I would have moved either a bit to the left or changed my camera angle slightly. Um, to try and include more of that in to get it to go up this line here. Um, and it's going to be difficult in this example because I don't have the actual image and the image may not have ever been that wide, I don't know. Um, but to me, the let me go back to another layer so I can draw again. Brush. To me, it would have been better if you think about the rule of thirds. Okay, now we've got this one on this on that line would have been better and I'll just change colors quickly would have been better if the jetty was going up these lines here okay then you would have had the horizon on these lines and the jetty on these lines and it would have worked really really well and so that's that's a bit of a trick um, just cropping that into a panoramic image has I think has saved it composition wise although it could be a little bit better the other thing to think about too is um, You've got a horizon that is slightly off level. Let me just get my little horizon tool. Where is it? I've lost it. No, we don't want precision mode. Anyway, I would, I would definitely, you've got this going on here. This is not quite level. And the way I know that, let me go back to the crop tool. And let's choose a grid and come down here is that if you have a look down here look at the gap between the line there and how it gets skinnier up here um, so it's slightly off level so you could probably just do it level that up a bit and it's another little thing that a lot of people don't pay a lot of attention to and it can make a, uh, a huge difference um, and this is a good thing with, with cameras that have got a bigger resolution like the d810 or, um, you know, these comment, like I know the new Canon 50D, whatever, it's got a huge 50 megapixel sensor. Uh, you've got a lot of room for maneuver with cropping and never be afraid to crop. If you're not going to print your image really large on a print or a canvas or something like that, and you're just going to share it on social media, it only needs to be, you know, what, 1200 pixels wide, and you'll still have enough to share it successfully. Um, because most uh, people, even on a, 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 a retina display, are only seeing your images in, a, in 144 pixels per inch. So you've got a hu huge amount of room to be able to make changes. So, you know, color then, okay, if this is the natural color, fantastic. That's what you've got to work with. Um, contrast is good. Composition is probably the thing I would work on more than anything and really take a bit more time to make sure that you're composing your shot in a way that's going to be more appealing. Uh, and, you know, maybe I would have also maybe, I don't know what was behind where you were standing, but you could have probably got a little bit more foreground in. It looks like there's something down the bottom right hand corner here. I'm not sure what. Um, so I'd say that's where the, maybe the earth met the water. Um, but maybe come back a little bit further, include a little bit more foreground to give the shot that, that little bit more um 
of a three-dimensional look. But otherwise, good job, mate. Nicely captured. Um, just you know, work on that composition. And from a post-processing point of view, maybe you could dull the colors down a little bit. Um, looking at the histogram, everything looks pretty good. Um, once again, we can do that very quickly. Just check if we've got any blown out highlights. Or um, let's just go over here, pick a red. Yes, OK. And then I need my paint bucket tool. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just oh, moving layers around. It's a bit hard with the Wacom pen. I find it difficult to do the right click. And we will just bring that underlying layer right up. Let's just see where did the highlights go. So you can't see what I'm adjusting because it doesn't show you the other screen. But I'm actually making some adjustments to see. If there were any highlights blown out, that looks pretty good. It's well exposed from that perspective. And then the other thing we can do then is let's change that now to uh, blue. If I come over here, we change it to blue, and then we can have a look and see if there was any uh, non exposed areas. Same way, I go. So, what I'm doing is I'm right clicking on the layer and I go to blending options. Um, and you can't see this unfortunately. And then blend if uh, the underlying layer, you can move the little. There's like a little arrow that allows you to move it. Uh, yeah, so there is some underexposed areas. So it allows you to move it to be able to then reveal through this layer uh, any under or what we call clipping or you know highlights or in the shadows. Um, yep. So Brian's just come and said, my camera said it was level. Yeah, quite often it does. Um, and that's the thing to watch out. It, it could just be slightly out. Um, and your camera could have been level. Um, there's no doubt about that. But maybe um, there's something in the horizon that makes it look like it's not level. And so by adjusting that, um, because remember, the person's eyes are looking at the horizon. They're not looking at your camera. So your camera can be level. But if the horizon doesn't appear level, and, it, and it's not level, when you use the ruler in, in, in here, there's a ruler tool. Let me find that ruler tool. I'll have to come back to that because I'm in something else. Yep, okay. Um, let me find the ruler. I don't use the ruler very often in here. It's up here somewhere. I think it's in the crop tool. No. It's around here somewhere. Anyway, there is a ruler tool that allows you to quickly see. And it will automatically do it for you. Yeah, I can't even find the ruler tool. Do, 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 do. There it is. So if you do that, you can then use that to straighten the layer. And you'll see that when I press straighten, it moves it very slightly. It was only probably one degree off, maybe two degrees, but it's enough that, um, you know, it's got to, it bothers me as a viewer, that's all. So if, if uh, it's just something to check, you know, it's easy to do, easy to fix. All right, so you see these blue areas that I've highlighted here. Um, they, I'll just turn them on and off so that you can see them flashing. You can see those areas are underexposed. Now, once again, not a big deal, not a big deal. Um, and having a look at the histogram on the right-hand side, uh, if I go to the RGB, you can see that it's relatively well exposed, but it is bunched up to the left, which tells you there's more darker pixels than lighter pixels. This big bunched up area would be the jetty and this headland here, so... You know, you can see that um, there's some underexposed areas, but it's not. It's it's pretty well exposed. So from that perspective, you've done relatively well. Um, but there you go. Some some tips for you there. There's sort of the things that I would do just to make it a little bit uh, a little bit better. Um, and hopefully that's helped you understand about some of the things you can do to improve your images. Just looking at those three different photos, because it is all about uh, just fixing one thing at a time if you get you know and I would say one of the biggest things I think most photographers don't do is spend enough time looking at their composition and when you get somewhere instead of just setting up and taking a picture really think about how does it fit in with what's going on um, you know this image here works really well as a panoramic but before you know the, the, this one of Brian's before uh, I cropped it it was it was fairly flat you know so you know, you want to, I'll go back up to the original image. You know, when it's full like that, you can see the difference straight away just by 
cropping it down into a panoramic makes. Even though you probably feel sad that you're, you know, you're wasting the sky up the top there. If it's not working as an image, then it's not working. So you've got to decide when you're there taking that photo. If you want that sky to be in it, then point your camera up, move the horizon down onto the bottom line of the rule of thirds. If it's not that important to you, then you know you you can move your camera down. Um, and that's something I probably would have done here. I would have pointed my camera down more. Uh, and you know that would have given me a t totally different perspective. It would have given you know the the uh, um, image would have been you know more um, dr would have drawn you in more. And that's the whole idea of photography, isn't it? Is you want to draw the viewer in so they feel like they're there and they're pretty excited about it. And it's going to have a coffee. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, live pixel chat session. Up just a reminder. Uh, if you do want your images to be critiqued at any point in time, then you can email me at ben at on three legs dot com, and that's with the word number three. So on three legs dot com. Uh, in your headline, make sure you put image critique. Shoot me three images, um, not too large, but not too small. I suggest um, eighteen hundred pixels on the longest edge. That allows me to zoom in and crop and muck around a bit. Um, send those through and I'll do my best. I've got a lot in my inbox since announcing this last week. So I apologize if I didn't get to your image today. Um, but I will do my best to get through them as the weeks go by. And hopefully we can do this on a weekly basis. Uh, if you do have any questions or anything or any chatter you wanted to finish off with right now, the chat box is open. Go for it. And once again, thanks to Craig, Rob and Brian for being the first volunteers to put their images up. I uh, really do appreciate you guys uh, doing that because it's, you know, it's putting your, your work out there for everybody to see and, uh, and that can be a little bit scary, uh, but hopefully the tips that I've given you have helped you out to think a bit more about your composition and your exposure and making sure that you are um, you know, putting a bit more thought into when you take a photograph, what you want the end desired outcome to be because that's really the important factor is what's this going to look like when I'm done and how do I make sure that I'm, you know, t I'm capturing what I need to capture at that point in time because there's only one chance to get it right and, uh, and if you don't get it right at the, at then you can't fix composition unfortunately. It's very hard to fix composition in Photoshop. Um, R7 Orkner. <laughs> Thank you, mate. My uh, my pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. All right. Um, so you know, just a final reminder to c connect with me on Facebook and Instagram. Really loving those, you know, doing those feeds, getting those photos out there on a daily basis. Um, so it's a great way for us to connect and chat as well. So I'm sort of connected with the people on those. So if you are on Instagram or Facebook, connect with me, come and say good day, and uh, yeah, we'll hang out there together. Well, that's it now. I think I will finish this stream up and then the video will be available later on for those of you that missed the live stream. For those of you that jumped into the live stream, thanks for jumping in and I look forward to catching up with you somewhere down the future. And thanks again for being a loyal viewer and uh, tuning in each and every week or every, whenever I release a video, which is spasmodic, I know at best, um, but I do appreciate it. So thanks very much and cheerio. Until next time, have a, uh, a very fun time with your camera. Cheerio.